Professor Clements with you as we discuss telescopes, and some of their properties, optical properties. Um, let's suppose we have a telescope with a primary mirror, that's the objective, that has a diameter of 28 centimeters, a focal length of 260 centimeters. It's constructed with a tube that holds its components. That tube is 140 centimeters long. And some astronomer has three eyepieces that can be used. Uh, 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, and 30 millimeters are the focal lengths of the eyepieces. Uh, so I, I typed this wrong. I had centimeters first. They should be millimeter numbers. That's commonly way that uh, uh, eyepieces are labeled. So suppose this person wants to get the greatest magnification. That's not always the best idea, but let's suppose we want the greatest magnification. Which eyepiece should be used, and what's the value of that magnification? Um, so magnification for the telescope is focal length of the objective divided by focal length of the eyepiece. Our objective has a focal length of 260 centimeters and then we have to choose the IP. So we're doing a division here. In order to get the largest result, we want to use the smallest number we can for the denominator. So that's going to be the 10 uh, millimeter eyepiece. So 260 centimeters, 10 millimeters. Any discussion on that uh, expression? We need to have the same units here. So let's do a little conversion, 260 centimeters. One centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. And that division is pretty easy. The magnification is 260, 260 power. And you'd need a very clear atmosphere, steady atmosphere to uh, successfully use that. That's a fairly high magnification. Uh, just a little concept here on this uh, telescope. This is a Cassegrain design. The starlight comes in, hits the primary mirror. We come up to a secondary mirror here, and then back through a hole in the primary mirror to the eyepiece. So it kind of folds the light path, and you can make a shorter telescope uh, tube using this design. But the length of the tube has no role to play in calculation of magnification. Magnification is focal length of the objective divided by focal length of the eyepiece. Well, the Hubble telescope has a primary mirror, an objective, that has a diameter of about 94.5 inches. How much light does the Hubble telescope gather compared to this uh, telescope that would be fairly common for amateur astronomers to have that has a diameter of 28 centimeters? Well, the light gathering power is based on the area of the objective. And since these are circles, that's going to be pi r squared. So to compare the light gathering ability of these two telescopes, we need to do pi r squared for both of them. Now, the 94.5 inches, we need to convert that to centimeters, 2.54 centimeters for one inch. So the Hubble telescope has a diameter that is uh, 240 centimeters. So we're going to do pi r squared for telescope A divided by pi r squared for telescope B. That will give us a comparison of the light gathering ability of these two telescopes. One thing you can notice is the pi's cancel. So if we do the radius uh, calculation here, 120 centimeters for the Hubble is its radius squared. Our telescope uh, for this amateur had a diameter of 28 centimeters, so 14 centimeters will be its radius. You should pause and do this calculation. <coughs> I came up with 73.5, and there are no units on this. Uh, the centimeters squared have canceled. So the Hubble telescope gathers 73.5 times more light than a typical amateur astronomer telescope. It is able to see dimmer objects, and see more distant objects, especially since it doesn't have atmosphere problems and uh, can leave its shutter open for a long time to gather more light. Now this pi r squared, we could yeah. calculate this with diameter. Uh, the diameter is just a factor of two bigger than the radius. So 
If I would put diameter divided by two here. Yeah. Um, and square that. That's pi r squared. And this would be a common factor for both telescopes. Diameter of A, pi diameter B over 2. That would be its radius and squared. So these factors of 2 are going to cancel. And we could do diameter squared of A divided by diameter squared of B. So if I would do that, 240 squared our amateur astronomer telescope is 28 and squared. If you do that, you get 73.5. Same value, just using diameter rather than radius. That's a little easier than taking the trouble to find the radius. Or you can do this another way, 240 over 28. You can divide the two diameters and then square later. If you do that, you get 73.5. So three ways to work this problem. Do pi r squared, find the radius. Uh, take the squares of the diameters and divide. Or divide the diameters and then later square. That gives you the uh, measurement of the light gathering capability comparison for two telescopes. So ask your instructor some questions on this.